Buddhism entered Han China via the Silk Road, beginning in the 1st or 2nd century CE. The first documented translation efforts by Buddhist monks in China all foreigners were in the 2nd century CE under the influence of the expansion of the Kushan Empire into the Chinese territory of the Tarim Basin under Kanishka. These contacts brought Gandharan Buddhist culture into territories adjacent to China proper. Direct contact between Central Asian and Chinese Buddhism continued throughout the 3rd to 7th century, well into the Tang period. From the 4th century onward, with Faxian's pilgrimage to India 395 to 414, and later Zanzong 629 to 644, Chinese pilgrims started to travel by themselves to northern India, their source of Buddhism, in order to get improved access to original scriptures. Much of the land route connecting northern India mainly Gandhara with China at that time was ruled by the Kushan Empire, and later the Hathalite Empire. The Indian form of Buddhist Tantra Vajrayana reached China in the 7th century. Tibetan Buddhism was likewise established as a branch of Vajrayana, in the 8th century. But from about this time, the Silk Road transmission of Buddhism began to decline with the Muslim conquest of Transoxiana, resulting in the Uyghur Khaganate by the 740s. By this time, Indian Buddhism itself was in decline, due to the resurgence of Hinduism on one hand and due to the Muslim expansion on the other, while Tang era Chinese Buddhism was repressed in the 9th century, but not before in its turn giving rise to Korean and Japanese traditions. The transmission of Buddhism First contacts Buddhism was brought to China via the Silk Road. Buddhist monks traveled with merchant caravans on the Silk Road, to preach their new religion. The lucrative Chinese silk trade along this trade route began during the Han Dynasty 206 BCE to 220 CE with the establishment by Alexander the Great of a system of Hellenistic kingdoms 323 BC to 63 BC and trade networks extending from the Mediterranean to modern Afghanistan and Tajikistan on the borders of China. The powerful Greco-Bactrian kingdoms 250 BC to 125 BC in Afghanistan and the later Indo-Greek kingdoms 180 BC to 10 CE practiced Greco-Buddhism and formed the first stop on the Silk Road after China for nearly 300 years. See Daewon Ta Yuan, Chinese Dawan literally Great Ionians. The transmission of Buddhism to China via the Silk Road started in the 1st century CE with a semi-legendary account of an embassy sent to the West by the Chinese Emperor Ming 58 to 75 CE. It may be assumed that travelers or pilgrims brought Buddhism along the Silk Roads, but whether this first occurred from the earliest period when those roads were open, ca. 100 BC, must remain open to question. The earliest direct references to Buddhism concern the 1st century AD, but they include hagiographical elements and are not necessarily reliable or accurate. Extensive contacts however started in the 2nd century CE, probably as a consequence of the expansion of the Greco-Buddhist Kushan Empire into the Chinese territory of the Tarim Basin, with the missionary efforts of a great number of Central Asian Buddhist monks to Chinese lands. The first missionaries and translators of Buddhist scriptures into Chinese were either Parthian, Kushan, Sogdian or Kuchian. Topic: <inaudible> Central Asian missionaries. In the middle of the 2nd century, the Kushan Empire under King Kandaska from its capital at Purushapura, modern Peshawar, India expanded into Central Asia and went beyond the regions of Kashgar, Khotan and Yarkand in the Tarim Basin, modern Xinjiang. As a consequence, cultural exchanges greatly increased, and Central Asian Buddhist missionaries became active shortly after in the Chinese capital cities of Luoyang and sometimes Nanjing, where they particularly distinguished themselves by their translation work. They promoted both Hinayana and Mahayana scriptures. Thirty-seven of these early translators of Buddhist texts are known. And Shigao, a Parthian prince who made the first known translations of Hinayana Buddhist texts into Chinese 148-170 Lokaksima, a Kushan and the first to translate Mahayana scriptures into Chinese 167-186 Anzan, a Parthian merchant who became a monk in China in 181 Ji Yao c. 185, a Kushan monk in the second generation of translators after Lokaksima 
Kong Meng Sang, 194 to 207, the first translator from Kongju. Ji Qian, 220 to 252, a Kushan monk whose grandfather had settled in China during 168 to 190. Ji Yu, C.230, a Kushan monk who worked at Nanjing. Kong Sangui, 247 to 280, born in Zhao Ji or Chao Chi, close to modern Hanoi in what was then the extreme south of the Chinese Empire, and a son of a Sogdian merchant. Tan Ti, C.254, a Parthian monk. Po Yen, C.259, a Kuchian prince. Dharmaraksa 265 to 313, a Kushan whose family had lived for generations at Dunhuang. And Fashin 281 to 306, a monk of Parthian origins. Posramitra 317 to 322, a Kuchian prince. Kumarajiva C. 401, a Kuchian monk and one of the most important translators. Photodang 4th century, a Central Asian monk who became a counselor to the Chinese court. Bodhidharma 440 to 528, the founder of the Chan Zen school of Buddhism and the legendary originator of the physical training of the Shaolin monks that led to the creation of Shaolin Kung Fu. According to the earliest reference to him by Yang Zanzi, he was a monk of Central Asian origin whom Yang Zanshi met around 520 at Luoyang. Throughout Buddhist art, Bodhidharma is depicted as a rather ill-tempered, profusely bearded and wide-eyed barbarian. He is referred to as the blue-eyed barbarian by Yan Hu Bian Hu in Chinese Chan texts. Five monks from Gandhara who traveled in 485 CE to the country of Fusing, the country of the extreme east, beyond the sea, probably Japan, where they introduced Buddhism. Jnanagupta 561 to 592 a monk and translator from Gandhara Sixananda 652 to 710 CE a monk and translator from Udayana Gandhara Prajna C 810 a monk and translator from Kabul who educated the Japanese Kakai in Sanskrit texts Topic Early translations The first documented translation of Buddhist scriptures into Chinese occurs in 148 CE with the arrival of the Parthian prince turned monk, An Shigao ch. and Shi. He worked to establish Buddhist temples in Luoyang and organized the translation of Buddhist scriptures into Chinese, testifying to the beginning of a wave of Central Asian Buddhist proselytism that was to last several centuries. An Shigao translated Buddhist texts on basic doctrines, meditation, and Abhidharma. An Zan ch. Anzan a Parthian layman who worked alongside in Shigao, also translated an early Mahayana Buddhist text on the Bodhisattva path. Mahayana Buddhism was first widely propagated in China by the Kushan monk Lokaksima ch. G. Lu Jia Chen active ca. 164-186 CE, who came from the ancient Buddhist kingdom of Gandhara. Lokaksima translated important Mahayana sutras such as the Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra, as well as rare, early Mahayana sutras on topics such as samadhi and meditation on the Buddha Aksobhya. These translations from Lokaksima continue to give insight into the early period of Mahayana Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese pilgrims to India From the 4th century onward, Chinese pilgrims also started to travel on the Silk Road to India, the origin of Buddhism, by themselves in order to get improved access to the original scriptures. According to Chinese sources, the first Chinese to be ordained was Zhu Zixing, after he went to Central Asia in 260 to seek out Buddhism. It is only from the 4th century CE that Chinese Buddhist monks started to travel to India to discover Buddhism firsthand. Faxian's pilgrimage to India 395 is said to have been the first significant one. He left along the Silk Road, stayed six years in India, and then returned by the sea route. Zanzong and Hayacho travelled from Korea to India. The most famous of the Chinese pilgrims is Zanzong, whose large and precise translation work defines a new translation period in contrast with older Central Asian works. He also left a detailed account of his travels in Central Asia and India. 
The legendary accounts of the holy priest Zanzong were described in the famous novel Journey to the West, which envisaged trials of the journey with demons but with the help of various disciples. <laughs> Merchants During the 5th and 6th centuries CE, merchants played a large role in the spread of religion, in particular Buddhism. Merchants found the moral and ethical teachings of Buddhism to be an appealing alternative to previous religions. As a result, merchants supported Buddhist monasteries along the Silk Roads and in return the Buddhists gave the merchants somewhere to stay as they traveled from city to city. As a result, merchants spread Buddhism to foreign encounters as they traveled. Merchants also helped to establish diaspora within the communities they encountered and over time, their cultures became based on Buddhism. Because of this, these communities became centers of literacy and culture with well-organized marketplaces, lodging, and storage. The Silk Road transmission of Buddhism essentially ended around the 7th century with the rise of Islam in Central Asia. Topic. Decline. Buddhism in Central Asia began to decline in the 7th century in the course of the Muslim conquest of Transoxiana. A turning point was the Battle of Talas of 751. This development also resulted in the extinction of the local Tocharian Buddhist culture in the Tarim Basin during the 8th century. The Silk Road transmission between Eastern and Indian Buddhism thus came to an end in the 8th century, on one hand because Islam in Central Asia repressed Buddhism along the Silk Road itself, but also because Buddhism in both India and China were in decline by that time. From the 9th century onward, therefore, the various schools of Buddhism which survived began to evolve independently of one another. The vigorous Chinese culture progressively absorbed Buddhist teachings until a strongly Chinese particularism developed. In the eastern Tarim Basin, Central Asian Buddhism survived into the later medieval period as the religion of the Uyghur Kara Koja Kingdom see also Beziklik Thousand Buddha Caves, and Buddhism became one of the religions in the Mongol Empire and the Chagatai Khanate, and via the Orats eventually the religion of the Kalmyks, who settled at the Caspian in the 17th century. Otherwise, Central Asian Buddhism survived mostly in Tibet and in Mongolia. Artistic influences Central Asian missionary efforts along the Silk Road were accompanied by a flux of artistic influences, visible in the development of Serindian art from the 2nd to the 11th century CE in the Tarim Basin, modern Xinjiang. Serindian art often derives from the Greco-Buddhist art of the Gandhara district of what is now Afghanistan and Pakistan, combining Indian and Greek influences. Highly sinicized forms of this syncretism can also be found on the eastern portions of the Tarim Basin, such as in Dunhuang. Silk Road artistic influences can be found as far as Japan to this day, in architectural motifs or representations of Japanese gods see Greco-Buddhist art. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism in the Book of Later Han The 5th century Book of the Later Han, compiled by Fan Yi 398-446 CE, documented early Chinese Buddhism. This history records that around 65 CE, Buddhism was practiced in the courts of both Emperor Ming of Han R. 58-75 CE at Luoyang modern Henan and, his half-brother, King Ying R. 41-70 CE of Chu at Pengcheng modern Jiangsu. The Book of Han has given rise to discussions on the maritime or overland transmission of Buddhism, and the origins of Buddhism in India or China. The Book of Han First, the Book of the Later Han Biography of Lu Ying, the King of Chu, gives the oldest reference to Buddhism in Chinese historical literature. It says Ying was both deeply interested in Huang Lao Huang Lao from Yellow Emperor and Laozi Taoism and observed fasting and performed sacrifices to the Buddha. Huang Lao or Wang Laozi Huang Laozi is the deification of Laozi and was associated with Fangxi, technician, magician, alchemist methods and Xi'an, transcendent, immortal techniques. To Lu Ying and the Chinese devotees at his court, the Buddhist 
Ceremonies of fasting and sacrifices were probably no more than a variation of existing Taoist practices. This peculiar mixture of Buddhist and Taoist elements remains characteristic of Han Buddhism as a whole. In 65 CE, Emperor Ming decreed that anyone suspected of capital crimes would be given an opportunity for redemption, and King Ying sent 30 rolls of silk. The biography quotes Ming's edict praising his younger brother. The King of Chu recites the subtle words of Wang Lao, and respectfully performs the gentle sacrifices to the Buddha. After three months of purification and fasting, he has made a solemn covenant or a vow she with the spirits. What dislike or suspicion from our part could there be, that he must repent of his sins? Let the silk which he sent for redemption be sent back, in order thereby to contribute to the lavish entertainment of the Upasakas and Sramana in 70 CE, King Ying was implicated in rebellion and sentenced to death, but Ming instead exiled him and his courtiers south to Danyang Anhui, where Ying committed suicide in 71 CE. The Buddhist community at Pencheng survived, and around 193 CE, the warlord Jai Rong built a huge Buddhist temple, which could contain more than 3,000 people, who all studied and read Buddhist scriptures. Second, Fan Yi's Book of Later Han quotes a current. 5th century tradition that Emperor Ming prophetically dreamed about a golden man, Buddha, while the kingdom of Tianzhu section above recorded his famous dream, the annals of Emperor Ming. History did not. Apocryphal texts give divergent accounts about the imperial envoys sent to India, their return with two Buddhist monks, Sanskrit sutras including sutra of 42 chapters carried by white horses, and establishing the White Horse Temple. Topic. Maritime or overland transmission Since the Book of Later Han present two accounts of how Buddhism entered Han China, generations of scholars have debated whether monks first arrived via the maritime or overland routes of the Silk Road. The maritime route hypothesis, favored by Liang Qichao and Paul Pelliot, proposed that Buddhism was originally introduced in southern China, the Yangtze River and Wai River region, where King Ying of Chu was worshipping Laozi and Buddha c. 65 CE. The overland route hypothesis, favored by Tang Yangtong, proposed that Buddhism disseminated eastward through Yuzi and was originally practiced in western China, at the Han capital Luoyang where Emperor Ming established the White Horse Temple c. 68 CE. The historian Rong Xinjiang re-examined the overland and maritime hypotheses through a multidisciplinary review of recent discoveries and research, including the Gandharan Buddhist texts, and concluded, The view that Buddhism was transmitted to China by the sea route comparatively lacks convincing and supporting materials, and some arguments are not sufficiently rigorous. The most plausible theory is that Buddhism started from the greater Yuzi of northwest India present-day Afghanistan and Pakistan and took the land roads to reach Han China. After entering into China, Buddhism blended with early Taoism and Chinese traditional esoteric arts and its iconography received blind worship. Topic. Origins of Buddhism Fan Yi's commentary noted that neither of the former Han histories, the 109-91 BCE records or the Grand Historian which records Zhang Qian visiting Central Asia and 111 CE Book of Han compiled by Ban Yang described Buddhism originating in India. Zhang Qian noted only that, this country is hot and humid. The people ride elephants into battle, although Ban Yang explained that they revere the Buddha, and neither kill nor fight, he has recording nothing about the excellent texts, virtuous law, and meritorious teachings and guidance. As for myself, here is what I have heard, this kingdom is even more flourishing than China. The seasons are in harmony. Saintly beings descend and congregate there. Great worthies arise there. Strange and extraordinary marvels occur such that human reason is suspended. By examining and exposing the emotions, one can reach beyond the highest heavens. In the Book of Later Han, the Kingdom of Tianzhu, Tianzhu Northwest India section of the Chronicle of the Western Regions, summarizes the origins of Buddhism in China. After noting Tianzhu envoys coming by sea through Rinan, Rinan Central Vietnam and presenting tribute to Emperor He of Han R. 89 CE and Emperor Huan of Han R. 147 CE, it summarizes the first hard evidence about Prince Ying and 
official story about Emperor Ming. There is a current tradition that Emperor Ming dreamed that he saw a tall golden man the top of whose head was glowing. He questioned his group of advisors and one of them said, In the West there is a god called Buddha. His body is 16 kai high, 3.7 meters or 12 feet, and is the color of true gold. The emperor, to discover the true doctrine, sent an envoy to Tianzhu northwestern India to inquire about the Buddha's doctrine, after which paintings and statues of the Buddha appeared in the Middle Kingdom. Then Ying, the king of Chu, a dependent kingdom which he ruled 41 to 71 CE, began to believe in this practice, following which quite a few people in the Middle Kingdom began following this path. Later on, Emperor Huan 147 CE devoted himself to sacred things and often made sacrifices to the Buddha and Laozi. People gradually began to accept Buddhism and, later, they became numerous. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism in apocryphal traditions Despite secular Chinese histories dating the introduction of Buddhism in the first century, some apocryphal Buddhist texts and traditions claim earlier dates in the Qin Dynasty (221–206 BCE) or former Han Dynasty (208 BCE–9 CE). Topic: <laughs> Qin Dynasty (221–206 BCE). One apocryphal story, first appearing in the 597 CE Lidai Sanbao Ji Li Dai Sanbao Ji, concerns a group of Buddhist priests who supposedly arrived in 217 BCE at the capital of Qin Shi Huang in Shenyang near Xi'an. The monks, led by the Shramana Shilifang Shi Li Fang, presented sutras to the first emperor, who had them put in jail. But at night the prison was broken open by a golden man, 16 feet high, who released them. Moved by this miracle, the emperor bowed his head to the ground and excused himself. The 668 CE Feiwan Zhulin Buddhist Encyclopedia elaborates this legend with Mauryan Emperor Ashoka the Great sending Shilifang to China. With the exception of Liang Qichao, most modern sinologists dismiss this Shilifang story. Some Western historians believe Emperor Ashoka sent Buddhist missionaries to China, citing the CA 265 13th Rock Edict that records missions to Greece, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. Others disagree. As far as we can gather from the inscriptions he Ashoka was ignorant of the very existence of China. <laughs> Han Dynasty There is a Chinese tradition that in 2 BCE, a Yuzi envoy to the court of Emperor I of Han transmitted one or more Buddhist sutras to a Chinese scholar. The earliest version derives from the lost mid-3rd century Wailu, quoted in Pei Songzi's commentary to the 429 CE records of three kingdoms. The student at the Imperial Academy Jing Lu Jing Lu received from Yikun Yi Kun, the envoy of the King of the Great Yuzi Oral Instruction in a Buddhist Sutras. Since Han histories do not mention Emperor I having contacts with the Yuzi, scholars disagree whether this tradition deserves serious consideration or can be reliable material for historical research. Topic: The Dream of Emperor Ming. Many apocryphal sources recount the pious legend of Emperor Ming dreaming about Buddha, sending envoys to Yuzi on a date variously given as 60, 61, 64 or 68 CE, and their return, three or eleven years later with sacred texts and the first Buddhist missionaries, Kasyapa Matanga or and Dharmaratna They translated the Sutra in 42 sections into Chinese, traditionally dated 67 CE but probably later than 100, the emperor built the White Horse Temple in their honor, and Chinese Buddhism began. All accounts of Emperor Ming's dream and Yuzi embassy derive from the anonymous middle 3rd century introduction to the Sutra of 42 chapters. For example, the late 3rd to early 5th century Mao Zilihuolin says, in olden days Emperor Ming saw in a dream a god whose body had the brilliance of the sun and who flew before his palace, and he rejoiced exceedingly at this. The next day he asked his officials, What god is this? 
The scholar Fu Yi said, Your subject has heard it said that in India there is somebody who has attained the Tao and who is called Buddha, he flies in the air, his body had the brilliance of the sun, this must be that god. Academics disagree over the historicity of Emperor Ming's dream, Tang Yangtong sees a possible nucleus of fact behind the tradition, and Henri Maspero rejects it as propagandistic fiction. <laughs> Emperor Wu and the Golden Man Exemplifying how traditional accounts of Chinese Buddhism sometimes combined history and legend, the Book of Han records that in 121 BCE, Emperor Wu of Han sent General Huo Qubing to attack the Xiongnu. Huo defeated the people of Prince Shutu Shu Tu in modern-day Gansu and captured a golden or gilded man used by the king of Shu Tu to worship heaven. Shutu's son was taken prisoner, but eventually became a favorite retainer of Emperor Wu and was granted the name Jin Midi, with his surname Jin Jin gold, supposedly referring to the golden man. The golden statue was later moved to the Yunyang Yunyang Temple, near the royal summer palace Ganquan Gan Quan, modern Shenyang, Shaanxi, the sea. 6th century A new account of the tales of the world claims this golden man was more than 10 feet high, and Emperor Wu of Han R. 141-87 BCE sacrificed to it in the Ganquan Gan Quan Palace, which is how Buddhism gradually spread into China. Topic see also Greco-Buddhism Kushan Empire Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Demival, Paul 1986. Philosophy and Religion from Han to Sui, in the Cambridge History of China, Volume 1, The Qin and Han Empires, 221 BCAD, 220. Edited by Dennis Twitchett and Michael Lowe. Cambridge University Press. pp. 808-873. Draper, Gerald The Contribution of the Emperor Ahsoka Maurya to the Development of the Humanitarian Ideal in Warfare. International Review of the Red Cross, No. 305. Dubs, Homer H. 1937. The Golden Man of Former Han Times. Tung Pao 33.1, 1-14. Hill, John E. 2009. Through the Jade Gate to Rome, a study of the Silk Roots during the later Han Dynasty, 1st to 2nd century CE. Booksurge, Charleston, South Carolina. ISBN 978-1-4392-2134-1. Michael C. Howard, the 23rd of February 2012. Transnationalism in Ancient and Medieval Societies: The Role of Cross-Border Trade and Travel. McFarland. ISBN 9780786490332. Low, Michael. 1986. The Religious and Intellectual Background in the Cambridge History of China, Volume 1: The Qin and Han Empires, 221 BCAD, 220, 649 to 725. Edited by Dennis Twitchett and Michael Lowe. Cambridge University Press. Richard H. Robinson, Sandra Ann Warrickko, Thanissaro, Bhikkhu, 1996. The Buddhist Religion: A Historical Introduction. Wadsworth Publishing Company. ISBN 978-0-534-20718-2. Saunders, Kenneth J. Buddhism in China, A Historical Sketch, The Journal of Religion, Vol. 3.2, pp. 157-169, Vol. 3.3, pp. 256-275. Tansen Sen January 2003. Buddhism, Diplomacy, and Trade, The Realignment of Sino-Indian Relations, 600-1400. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN 978-0-8248-2593-5. Whitfield, Roderick, Whitfield, Susan, and Agnew, Neville 2000. Cave Temples of Mogo, Art and History on the Silk Road. Getty Publications. Williams, Paul 2005. Buddhism, Buddhist Origins and the Early History of Buddhism in South and Southeast Asia. Taylor and Francis. Zerker, Eric 2007. The Buddhist Conquest of China, 3rd ed. Leiden. E. J. Brill, 1st ed. 1959, 2nd ed., 1972. Zerker, E. 1990. Han Buddhism and the Western Region, in Thought and Law in Qin and Han China, studies dedicated to Anthony Hulsway on the occasion of his 80th birthday, ed. by W. L. Idema and E. Zerker, Brill, pp. 158-182. Further reading Christoph Baumer, China's Holy Mountain, An Illustrated Journey into the Heart of Buddhism. 
I. B. Tories, London 2011. ISBN 978-1-84885-700-1 Richard Foltz, Religions of the Silk Road, Palgrave Macmillan, 2nd edition, 2010, ISBN 978-0-230-62125-1 Sally Hovey Riggins, The Silk Road Journey with Zanzong, Westview Press, 2004, ISBN 0-8133-6599-6 Jibin, G. Bin Root and China. 